All right, what's good, y'all, man? So this broke a couple hours ago, but I did want to react, man. Another major recruit we have in the state of Georgia. Devin Carter has officially narrowed down his list. Now, if y'all don't know, y'all haven't been following his journey. Devin Carter was committed to Florida State. All right, so first off, let's see if that's even in his top 11. Okay, as y'all can see, Florida State is not in his top 11. So why do I say Florida State? His pops was a star at Florida State. Dexter Carter had an outstanding career with the Seminoles, man. And that was originally who he was committed to. But as we can see right now, they're struggling. They're one and eight this season, not having a good year. Um, and a lot of recruits don't want to go there. Uh, so that, that that's kind of major key. So what's the top 11 look like? You got Bama, Oregon, Auburn, Texas A&M, uh, Texas, LSU, Georgia, Ohio State, Miami, Ole Miss, and then obviously Louisville. Now, if I had to say Louisville's kind of the surprise pick there, you know what I'm saying? Especially with, obviously, the guy Ja'Cory Brooks right now, who's formerly of Alabama, that's there, that's having a good season. I think he has the most catches of over 20-plus yards this year. But Louisville's kind of a surprise team, to say the least. Now, a team I think that's interesting, obviously, when we're looking at the 26th class, I'm going to go Texas A&M. I think that's very interesting. Why? Because he has a teammate, Aaron Gregory, that he plays with currently right now that's also committed uh, to Texas A&M. So it could be like, hey, bro, Come play with me and Jordan, man. Let's let us let us run this up at Texas A&M. Let's, let's go make history, right? Let's go get this program to where we want it to be, where it needs to be, right? Because Texas A&M has not been, I don't want to say the word relevant, because they have been a relevant program, but they haven't been to the mountaintop. They haven't been competing for, you know what I'm saying, national championships in this new era of college football. You know what I'm saying? So they go there and make something special. And like I said, Texas A&M's having a great year so far this year when you look at it and look at what they've been able to do and what they've been able to accomplish, right? Le'Veon Moss is done for the rest of the year but they have had a pretty good year overall. Now, Texas is interesting as well because he's a four-star prospect, right? But we see with Texas at the wide receiver spot, you get to play early on and pretty often if you're very talented and good. And that's what Devin Carter is, right? Look at Texas, Ryan Wingo's getting to play. Obviously, the unfortunate situation that I talked about earlier on my channel was obviously John Tay Cook. That does suck, but you do have a guy potentially that can come in and if he plays well, could potentially play early. Another program I want to point out to y'all in this is Auburn. Auburn is another great program where you can go in and play early as a freshman if you're out there and you're doing your thing. Go look at Cam Coleman having some good playing time this year. Is Auburn having the best year? No. They got to get the quarterback position together in the coming years. That's why they flipped Deuce Knight. All right. Next up, you also have Malcolm Simmons, who's having a good freshman year for them as well. He's playing a little bit of special teams, playing a little bit of everything, but he's contributing a lot offensively. He's already has come up with some big time touchdowns for the Tigers this year. So I think those are some very interesting plays in this as well. Now, you look at Georgia, you can never count them out, right? They're always a very good program at developing receiver. Um, you know what I'm saying? We know we just talked about them landing C.J. Wiley. They'll probably be in it because they, they are in the state of Georgia. That's where he plays at Douglas County um, out there. So they are always kind of be in contention until he narrows it down. So that does make a lot of sense. You look at Oregon, same thing. Oregon has a very explosive attack, right? Now, when I look at his frame, I, I'm, I'm kind of thinking of a guy. I could see him going to Oregon and potentially you know, producing 150-yard games and things like that and being a featured guy because this is a passing-oriented offense. And with Dan Lennon and crew at, at, uh, at the helm, he could potentially produce some big-time numbers and be a, you know, a major prospect on years to come come about. Now, Alabama is also another interesting story as well. Um, haven't had necessarily receivers that we're accustomed to seeing over the in years prior. Do have some decent receivers, obviously, this year. But when we know this Alabama program, when they've been elite, it's been top-end talent at Alabama um, at receiver. And he would definitely add to that mode. You know, and in LSU, you can never count them out. Uh, we, we Just look at the NFL level and what they're producing, right? The two top guys in the NFL right now in receiving yards is Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase, right? I got to rest my case. The two rookies that is balling out right now when they're playing and they're healthy is Malik Neighbors, right, and Brian Thomas in Jacksonville. Like, LSU is wide receiver you. They produce at a high level. Ohio State does that as well. Look at the recent memory. Jeremiah Smith coming in and playing early as a freshman, right? Emeka Abuka, Chris Olave, right? Marvin Harrison Jr., both LSU and I feel like obviously Ohio State can say they're wide receiver you. Both phenomenal programs. But in terms of his commitment, who's going to land him? You know what I'm saying? I don't know. I don't have any inside intel on this. But I'm saying good fits that I could see happening. Texas, Texas A&M, Auburn. Some surprise picks that he could potentially do. Oregon, LSU, Ohio State. In my humble opinion. Again, I have no intel. That's just my thoughts. That's just my opinion. Um, but comment below, man, your thoughts on Devin Carter announcing his top 11, a major prospect here in the state of Georgia in the class of 2026. Already has two, two, two teammates uh, that he plays with right now at Texas a Comment below your thoughts. I want to hear from y'all.